All right, so today is actually a really big day. Today, I have been in business for one year, Grind Real LLC, and yes, it's a real business. Yes, that little cheesy thing you see that pops up at the beginning of this video and every other video that you've seen is real. It exists in Wyoming, and um, you know, I made it. I made it one whole year with my own business, and I kind of wanted to talk about everything that I did wrong and some things that I've learned and some things that I've realized throughout this past year of owning a business. I didn't quit my job one year ago today. I just opened the business. About a month from now is when I quit my job one year ago, if that makes any sense. Anyways, I kind of wanted to show you where it all started. It's also a good reason to give these dogs a ride. We're gonna go enjoy some some wind in those ears. Yeah, what about you in the back? You doing good? You hide in the back like a creep, dude. All right, so this is uh, this is the spot. This is, this is where I held my last job. I remember always coming here and in the mornings I would be the first one here. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is a really, really nice view and then having to promptly walk through these things into that office building yeah i've been i've been doing this ever since and i can't thank you guys enough because without you guys i probably i definitely wouldn't have a business right i wouldn't have i wouldn't have people to support the channel i wouldn't have a reason to make videos i wouldn't have i wouldn't have anything if i didn't have viewers and so for that i'm very grateful and so thanks for being here for a year thanks for watching me grow if you're new to the channel hopefully you can see more growth hopefully I don't fall into the 30% statistics because the longer you're open as a business the higher chance that you have to fail okay so let's talk about uh, one year of business failures and everything that I think that I've done wrong that I'm aware of and things that I'm currently working on but I'll give you some analytics about the business first, I guess. I'm pretty transparent. Uh, last year I made 145,000 with my side jobs and YouTube combined. This year, I don't actually know. I'd like to say I'm somewhere around 200,000 a year. Last year I paid $40,000 in taxes. Last year I spent about $30,000, $35,000 in business expenses, upgrading all my gear, moving things around. Uh, accountants fees all kinds of stuff um, just adding up you know what I paid in taxes is someone's yearly salary and what I spent on business expenses is someone's yearly salary and to me that's just absolutely insane I would have never thought that I would ever be doing that um, I just want you to know that I'm not trying to brag or anything like that I'm just trying to be transparent with the numbers okay so the first thing that I've learned uh, at least through this year of business was that it's all about finding a return on investment and doing that figuring out what works I, I get a lot of shit from other youtubers that are like this Joshua Fluke guy all he does is sit in his chair in his room and talk and his editing sucks and this sucks and that sucks and all he does is he does like he barely tries he just rants in front of the camera and gets all these views and while you're correct I used to spend a whole lot more time finding and editing little pictures and stuff to go into my videos to add this supplemental material and I realized none of that actually mattered if you don't have something worth telling you can't connect with people it doesn't matter how much editing you put into it I mean editing will take you pretty far but editing also takes forever and is the most time intensive part of everything that I do you can have all the b-roll in the world but b-roll and these nice views of my dogs in slow motion and stuff doesn't tell you the story doesn't emotionally connect with anybody and so me sitting here being able to communicate with you guys on a level where you guys can relate to me I think is more important if I'm sitting here or not it doesn't I don't think it really matters and that's what I started to realize I would spend all this time eight nine hours adding these little images that would pop up just for a second try to do it without it and see if people notice focus on just being more charismatic in front of the camera focus on just looking at the camera focus on being in focus you know as I got better at the things that actually mattered not just the editing I tried to edit all of my flaws away and it didn't work and so the return on investment just wasn't there it, I, as much as I would like to sit here and just edit these videos and have like special effects all day long it just doesn't matter the audience might be like yeah that's that's neat but it doesn't make your story any better every 100 percent effort you put in the audience only notices like one percent and that uh, that hit really hard because i just had to recalibrate so that was one thing i learned another thing that i learned which i was already kind of aware of was never have all your eggs in one basket and i didn't really take it seriously i just i knew i needed to diversify i don't make my living just off of youtube ad revenue that would be silly that would be very dangerous youtube demonetizes people left and right i mean i have a a website i have affiliate links i have all this other stuff outside which i get the majority of the traffic from from this youtube channel but it's not just ad revenue but it didn't really hit home until one of the affiliate links that i was using um stopped 
working. I lost a bunch of money there. Well, good thing I have all these other links that I can use. You got a backup plan. If one of these dies, you have another one. And also in this year, like payouts have changed. Um, like every 60 days they'll pay out or every 90 days they'll pay out. And when they change the payout system, we're going, oh, we're going from every 30 days to every 90 days. So now you're going to have a gap of two months where you're not going to get any money. Are you prepared for that? Are you financially prepped for that? I always have a plan B, C, D, and E, and F, and G, and H, I, J. And then I got a plan complete alphabet. Probably not going to give up on plan A ever. This is plan A. This is what I want to do. This is what I enjoy doing. But I do have fallback things that I would do. I would teach code or teach different skills or something like that. So we get the question all the time, how do you stay motivated, which is a myth. You don't stay motivated. Nobody stays motivated ever. We just do things that we don't want to do. If you're not in the mood, hey, no one really cares. You have to do it anyways. I'm not in the mood to go to work tomorrow, you know, on a Sunday night hey, you're still gonna get up on Monday morning and you're gonna go. And doing things when I don't feel like it has become the norm. When I had a job and I would come home and I didn't feel like making a YouTube video, I didn't feel like side hustling, then it would be okay because I had a job and I didn't feel like it. Well now, when I don't feel like it, everything is on the line as it should be if you're working for yourself, it's your baby. But doing things when I don't feel like it, well, I'm not in the mood, that's dedication, that's consistency. Changing my mood, okay, I'm not in the mood. Well, change your mood, Josh. There's always an unlimited amount of things to do, always something else to do always an email to respond to, always a web page to make, always another video to edit, always another video skill to learn, always another code skill. There's always something to do. It's not like you have your job and then five o'clock on Friday, hey, no more work. It doesn't, maybe, maybe if I have enough money to not work, maybe, but there's an unlimited amount of things to do. And if you don't stop yourself and just take a breather, you're gonna burn out. And for me, it's not an option to burn out. It's possible to burn out, but it's not an option to burn out. So I always check myself before burnout. If I start to feel myself getting like, oh, this is getting repetitive, this is getting boring, you're not excited about this anymore, which I try not to put too much thought into, you're not excited about this too much. That happens with most things in life. But if it starts to get like, okay, all right, I'm starting to hate what I'm doing, then I'll do some things differently. I'll make like a tech video or a game dev video or I'll do a video like this. Some days you'll have a lot of ideas and some days you'll have zero ideas. Every time I have an idea, I note it down immediately. I use Evernote most of the time. I note it down in my video ideas. I'll just put the title of whatever my idea was and I'll just put a couple thoughts below it. And then if I'm ever like, I don't know what to do today. Is there something easy? I'm running out of time. I was, let me look at this idea list real quick. Anything quick and easy? And sometimes I do that, but a majority of the time I have a few days in advance of ideas that I want to make. Some days you'll be super energetic and some days you won't. Some days you'll be like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. This is the best thing since sliced bread. Oh my gosh wow, I'm doing YouTube. And then some days it's like, oh my gosh, I'm doing YouTube, you know? And I think we all have that, whether it's a job, because I like doing this and I chose to do this and I would do this even if I wasn't getting paid, you know, it, it comes and goes. Some days you plan things and they don't go according to plan at all. For example, I spent about two hours trying to figure out in my head if I could set up an outside stream and then I finally got it all figured out and it failed horribly. You can go look at the last live stream. It was just awful. Like, oh, we're buffering again. Oh, the audio is bad. and. You'll have all this time where you spend on these ideas and these videos and these projects and then you'll go to execute and then it just doesn't work. I would say maybe once every other week I'll spend a lot of time filming and editing a video and then I'll watch it back and I'll start editing it and I'm like, what the fuck are you saying, Josh? This makes no sense. What, what message are you trying to get across? You can't even complete a sentence. <sighs> that's just, that's, that's, and you gotta be okay with that. That's just part of it. You gotta redo it. Yeah, you've filmed it three times. We'll film it a fourth time. Okay, so haters on YouTube and dealing with uh, criticisms of you and your ways. Um, I'm a big fan of stoicism. I read a lot of stoicism. I don't really care what other people think of me for the most part, but occasionally I am human. I do slip up. Uh, occasionally there's that one comment in the comments that's like, when your girl says something to you that you mentioned that happened to you when you were a kid and they just like throw that back in your face, there's like comments on that level of like, they just hit that button and you're like, and you start thinking about it and you start boiling up and you're just like, oh, what is this? And it just kind of can ruin your whole day. And if I find myself having those thoughts from reading the comments, I'm just like, okay, dude, you're just, it's just YouTube, man. Like if anything, they're giving me more engagement on my videos and they're padding my pockets by giving me more engagement, which lets me charge more money for sponsors. So thank you haters for leaving hater comments. It happened a lot more often about a year ago, but now it's just like, eh. I do read the comments because I like engaging and I like seeing feedback and I like seeing what users see in my video because what you guys see and what I see are very different things. And so when I make a video and I put emphasis on something, at least in my head, when I think I'm putting emphasis on something in a video, you guys don't even see it. You guys see something else and you're like, wow, that was a great part. And I'm like, I just 
barely mentioned that thing. I don't even really remember talking about that. And you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. I'm like, no, but this was the point of the video over here. I'm constantly bouncing back looking at the comments to see what you guys see compared to what I see and seeing, okay, did I direct the attention correctly in this video or did I not? I'd say for the most part it lines up, but there's some videos in there that do amazingly well and I'm like, why did this do so well? I barely even said anything. When I first made these videos, it was just one linear edit, 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 add music, add intro, add ending, and then post, and that doesn't work. So now what I've learned to do is I'll edit a rough draft take a break for about an hour, come back, and then delete 40%. It's like when you write a paper in college and then leave it after you get your rough draft done and you come back and you try to read it and you're like, what, what am I saying? One thing I've learned is to not sell out, not because I specifically failed in that and took like sponsors or products that I wasn't particularly proud of, it's just that I've seen other people do it. I would rather say no to money right now and then cash out later for more money and still have my dignity. I don't want to have a moment in time. I don't want to just be a little blip. Oh, this was Josh. I want to be, hey, this is Josh. Or, hey, this is Josh over here. Or, hey, have you heard of that whole grind reel thing? I want to have a business. I don't want to have a moment. Another thing that I've learned is having a not to-do list works a lot better than having a to-do list. There's always something to do. As I was saying before, there's an unlimited list of things to do when you have your own company. But a not to-do list, you don't really think about that too much because you can end up just saying yes to everything. You want to say yes to all the opportunities all the time and the reality is you can't. You want the money. You need the money. You want to build the relationship. You want to build that connection. You want to make that network bigger. It's just in your best interest to say yes to everything, but it's not in your best value to actually do that. You have to say no, I can't do that, which actually raises your value because then they're like, why is he saying no? You know, like, what can we do to make him say yes? So it's kind of a win win. There's a common phrase by Jocko Willink, and he says, freedom through discipline. And while I agree there is freedom through discipline, you need to leave yourself some creative buffer and you have to have some creative flexibility there. Sometimes I have a good idea for a video for the next day that I'm going to work on and then I wake up in that morning and someone leaves a comment that I read and I'm like, wow, this is a great topic and we get to talking and I start finding myself saying all this stuff that I'm like, why don't you make a video about this, Josh? And because this other thing is just kind of like on the shelf for your next to do item. Freedom through discipline is for the most part how I do things, but it's also freedom through consistency. Half the work is just showing up. And so that's what I do. And I know that some of these videos don't make a whole lot of sense. And I know some of these videos are a lot better than others. Get these three things done, these two things done, and then you can go do whatever. What I learned is that it's okay to have huge expectations when you have a business, but it's also okay if you don't meet those huge expectations. It's kind of like Grant Cardone's 10X rule, because even if you hit 5x your goal, hey, you're, you did way better than your initial goal. Another thing that I learned is that you need to be doing different things constantly. Yes, you can find certain things that work. You should still try to mix it up regardless of if you find something that works because if you find something that works and then you repeat that over and over and over, it maybe it'll keep working forever, maybe not. But now that you found something that does work, you know that you can bounce back to that as a default for content that you need later. For example, when I was first doing YouTube, I made interview videos with recruiters and different HR people when I was applying for jobs jobs and I recorded it and those did very well but I kept trying different things different tactics different angles different color grading and then I was like you know what I'm just gonna talk about how I really feel about this whole job process and corporate everyone enjoyed that and I would have never found out I would have never found out that so many people agree with me on the whole corporate thing unless I kept trying different things until I finally was like you know what I'm tired of doing this. I'm just going to do something that I really want to do. I don't care what people think. I need to get this off my chest. Maybe someone out there can be in agreement and that'll be it and I'll be good. And so I'm constantly trying new things, things that do great, things that do terrible. This video will probably do terrible because it's unrelated to code and people don't just want to sit and watch me rant in my room to a camera for 45 minutes. Another thing that I've learned is to prepare for distractions. It doesn't matter how much of a plan you have on Monday morning, something is going to happen every single day that's going to try and derail you. And the more you prepare for this and just be like, okay, not now, I can't, I, I can't. I'm just ignoring this. I'm flipping my phone over. I don't care about this drama right now and we're gonna keep moving forward. I guess that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully this has been insightful or transparent and if anything, I, I wouldn't be here without you guys. I look forward to hopefully inspiring other people to take that leap and open their own business. So if anything, having a business while you have a job is still a great way to business expense things you're already spending money on as long as you're using it for your business, you know? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,